day everybody wherever you are in the world. Tonight we commemorate the past weekend where we celebrated the 1971st death anniversary of Jesus Christ. Jeez, talk about clinging on too long. Every year? Anyway, Easter, where we somehow associated Jesus with chocolate bunnies. Bunnies don't even lay eggs, but somehow we've made them the symbol on chocolate packaging around this time. Nonetheless, families and communities come out and about and help the less fortunate in fantastic ways. We also are guaranteed to get politicians out and about, meeting and greeting and trying to score brownie points for the next election. This week on Good Friday, President Zuma came out at Ellis Park where he joined the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God at their annual gathering and he had some great insights into how we can help better the government. Sizela pagu zoto libusi so, lokto lumtanda zo. Sifuna ni standa zele geti na esinga ba party bezwe, jengo ba ingwa ti ingo lo ipai peli shonjalo. Uma senza maputa ni skulegele, unkulunku lugu ti singa wenza maputa. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but when President Zuma ran for president. I'm pretty sure the slogan was not vote for us and together we'll pray for jobs and we'll see. And by the way, no amount of prayers could make up for the ANC's mistakes. They have more, enough mistakes there to make their own Charlie Chaplin slapstick comedy. In effect, what the president was saying was that we need to take responsibility for the politicians' mistakes. But there was a bit more. There was this one other guy that President Zuma was willing to blame for his mistakes. Nitandazele na le anju ebaluleki le parliament la poko no wenzwa kone mteto kuti sikwazi kuziphatha kahle ngenhloni ipo nokuhlona pana Satan Is he talking about Julius? Satan the poor guy is in hell trying to get his life together and Zuma starts blaming him. I didn't see Satan at Nkandla. I didn't see Satan shopping for a 4 billion rand jet and excuse the pun but hell I didn't see Satan playing footsie with the Guptas nonetheless with all that Satan talk the crowd was still entertained thanks to a very odd bishop have a look we have here the highest authority of the country but he came here to be blessed. You came here to be blessed. I came here to be blessed. And I believe that we are blessed. Okay, okay. Firstly, I hope the bishop is getting paid double because it must be really awkward to have every single line you're saying be translated. You know what they say, double the time, double the... Secondly, this guy looks like he performs sermons for the mafia. Where do they get these guys? Okay, I'm coming here, I'm coming here to bless you guys, and then I'm gonna go, so you gotta pay me my money, capish? And Jacob wasn't impressed at all, as you can see. But that did turn around when the bishop made the greatest sin of all time by asking President Zuma to do this. Mr. President, Jacob Zuma cannot live without singing a song. No! Are you crazy? Do you not know what you've done? Jacob does not have to sing. He can go home quietly. Let him go out the stairs on the left. He doesn't have to. We can play Vulindela on repeat for everyone else if they want to hear music. Nonetheless, Jacob being the gentleman that he is, obliged accordingly. <laughs> And then from that, it became a 90s school disco where you paid two rand to get in. Okay, 
evening. That was another day, but still, he's got the moves. Get low, get low. It seems that everything is a song and dance. But when it comes to the main issue in South African politics, nobody has an answer. The best answer we can get, as you just saw, is to just pray. I'm sorry, Mr. President. I'm sorry, ANC. But Nelson Mandela, Walter Sisulu, and other such stalwarts are watching from above, watching their dream of a thriving democracy become a disco of deceit. Good night. Thank you.